This is for topic area three, understand what makes a product financially viable. And this is 3.4, using break even as an aid to decision making. When we're trying to make decisions about our business project, performing a break even analysis can be very useful. The break even point is the level where your total revenue is equal to your total costs. So in other words, when you are not making any money, but you're not losing any money. And that can be really important when starting a new business. We can calculate our break even by using fixed costs divided by your selling price per unit subtracted your cost per unit. So let's look at a break even example using a t-shirt company. We know our fixed costs are £9,500 and we know our share price is going to be sold for £10. We know our cost is £5, so we put all of those figures into our formula. So first of all, we put £9,500 in as our fixed cost. Our selling price is £10, so we put £10 in. And our cost per unit is 5 so we put 5 in. We need to do this first before we do our division. So we do 5 from 10 is 5. So we do 9,500 divided by 5 equals 1,900. Our break even point is 1,900. We need to sell 1,900 t-shirts to break even. So the break even analysis is a planning tool that helps businesses make the right decisions. You would use a break-even analysis when you first set up a business and when you first launch a new product. You can use it to set realistic targets, to set realistic sales targets, and also to review and analyze your performance. So why do we use a break-even analysis? Many businesses don't make profits until being open for two years. Some of them often run at a loss. That's because it takes time to become established as a business and as a brand. You might think, what's the point if you're not making any profits? But your staff are still getting wages, including yourself, because you'll probably be taking a wage for yourself. All of that is taken off before your profits. So even if you didn't make any profits at all, ever, you're still getting paid and your staff are still getting paid. So there are some benefits of doing a break-even analysis. You can see the exact amount of units that you will need to make to cover your costs. And you can see the exact amount of units you need to make to start making any sort of profit. You can also see where you might make a loss if you don't sell enough units. You can also see where you might make a profit if you do sell enough units. So it's kind of obvious, kind of common sense, but by doing a break-even analysis, we can find out lots of key milestones that we need to meet. Next, we need to take a look at break-even graphs. These are quite common to be seen in an exam, and we need to be able to interpret exactly what they're showing. So first of all, we can see the break-even point. That is where our lines cross over. So our two dotted lines that are on a gradient, they will cross over at some point. Where they cross over is our break even point. So essentially we should have two lines. One line is our total costs, which should increase over time. Um, so here where it's got unit sales across the bottom, as our sales and units go up, our total costs should also go up because total costs include our variable costs as well. So if we make 10,000 units, um, the costs will be down here somewhere, but when we make 100,000, the cost will be up here. So that's why our total costs line goes up on a gradient. Our sales also will go up on a gradient because the more units that we sell, our sales and our money will go up. Where the two lines cross is our break even point. So that is where we are making zero money and losing zero money. Anything above where the break even point is, 
any of this area here is our profit and anything below is a loss. There's usually a horizontal line that goes across completely straight, which will be our fixed costs. They are fixed, so they do not change dependent on the unit sales. So they're the things that you need to be able to identify from looking at the actual graph. Anything after and above the fixed costs are variable costs. So this area here is our variable costs. So we're going to have a look at an exam question now. First of all, we need to take a look at the question and then try to rearrange the formula. So our question says Bobby runs a small business. His products sell for £6 each and his variable costs are £4.50 per unit. It gives you the break-even formula in pretty much every exam that I've seen. So the break-even formula is fixed costs divided by selling price per unit minus cost per unit. If the break-even point is 5,000 units, what are his fixed costs? So it's giving you the answer to this formula and we need to rearrange the formula. So let's do that underneath. First of all, we've got break-even. Break-even equals fixed cost divided by selling price per unit minus cost per unit. I've written that out so it makes it easier for us to rearrange. So underneath, I've put in all the values that we have. 5,000 is our break-even point. Selling price per unit is £6. And variable cost of £4.50. So I've put all those values in. And let's work it out on the third line. So 5,000 is equal to fixed costs divided by 1.5. Now we know from maths that if 5,000 is equal to fixed cost divided by 1.5, then we need to multiply 5,000 by 1.5 to get fixed costs. So when we move this divide 1.5 to the other side of the equals, it switches to multiply 1.5. So 7,500 are our fixed costs. And that is how you rearrange the formula. So this is another quest question where we need to look at a graph. And this question was a really difficult question where only around 20% of people actually got it all right. So let's read it first, nice and carefully. You completed an apprenticeship last year which involved you working and qualifying as a hairdresser. As you've always wanted to run your own business, you've decided to become a franchisee of a mobile hairdressing brand, Supreme Salons. You think that this is the best way to be successful in such a highly competitive market. You have produced a break-even graph to identify how many customers you need each month to break even. Use the graph to calculate the variable cost per unit. So there's a number of things we need to do to get this right. The scenario is highly detailed because there will be other questions on the exam that refer to this. For example, there will be questions about being a franchisee. There will be questions about being an apprentice and so on. But for this question, we just want to focus on the costs. So we're going to need to look at the graph to break some information down. First of all, it will help to be able to label the different sections. So as we've mentioned before, this line coming across all the way, because it stays the same, we know that our red line is our fixed costs. The point where they meet in the middle is our break-even point. So this little section here where they meet is our break-even point. And then we know that anything above is our profit. This area here is our variable costs. So we need to essentially work out our variable costs and then work out what it is per unit. So at the point where these meet, we know that our break even point is going to be, it looks like 2,500 going across. And we know that our fixed costs are 1,000. So that means that we basically need to look at where this line is and look at where this line is and we need to subtract one from the other. And then we need to divide it by how many units have actually been produced. In this case, it's customers. So we've got 50 customers. We've got 2,500 pound total costs. 
and we've got £1,000 fixed costs. So we need to work out what our variable cost is per unit. So if our number of customers is 50, we know our costs are 2,500 and we know our fixed costs are 1,000. That means we can work out our variable costs and we know how many units as well. So let's put all the calculations in to see what we can come up with. So you need to take your time here to make sure you understand exactly what's happening. We know where our break even point is, which means we know that it's 50 customers where the two lines are connected. We know that our fixed costs are 1000 because this is the horizontal line coming across. And we know that our total costs are the costs where our break even point is meeting. Therefore, we've got total costs are equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. We know that from one of our formulas. So if we want to work out what variable costs are, we need to flip the formula around. So first of all, we know what our total costs are and we know what our fixed costs are. Our variable costs is going to be our total minus our fixed costs. So our variable costs are 1,500. We also know how many number of units because we need to know variable cost per unit and we know that our units are 50. So our variable cost per unit is going to be 1,500 divided by 50 which equals £30. So our variable cost per unit is £30. Take your time to look at this again until it starts to sink in and make a little bit of sense. That's the end of this video. Any questions, send me an email and I'll get back to you.